JavaScript, the most popular programming language in the world and also one of the most hated languages. But why? Why is there so much JavaScript hate? Let's be honest, JavaScript has baggage. It was created in 1995 by this dude in just 10 days as a tiny scripting language to add a bit of interactivity to web pages. It wasn't meant for the massive complex apps we build today. So naturally, it's got some weird behaviors that can make everyone, even coding pros, confused. For example, JavaScript automatically converts values from one type to another in operations that involve different types. This is supposed to make JavaScript flexible, but it can lead to some confusing, unpredictable results. For example, if you add two empty arrays, we get an empty string. If we add an empty array to an empty object, we get the string object object. But if you swap the order of operands, we get zero. And if you add two empty objects, we get not a number. In JavaScript, we have two operators for comparing values, loose equality or double equals and strict equality or triple equals. If you accidentally don't type that extra equal sign, you're in for a surprise. Here's another funny example. With double equals, number zero equals the string zero. Now, number zero also equals an empty array. So if number zero equals empty string and an empty array, we should assume that a string zero equals an empty array, right? Nope, they're not equal. Here's another funny one. Let's say we have an array of numbers like 1, 100,000, 21, 30, and 4. If we use array.sort to sort this array, we get the same result. Why? Because by default, the sort method sorts elements as if they were strings. To have JavaScript sort numbers correctly, we need to provide a compare function to the sort method. The other issue is that JavaScript has two special values for representing no values, null and undefined. A lot of people, especially beginners, don't know the difference, but they are not the same thing. Undefined means a variable has no value assigned, but null means the value is intentionally empty. Another problem is that this keyword, which is supposed to refer to the object that it belongs to, but it can have different values depending on where it's used. And how the this keyword shifts and morphs, confusing developers as it changes context. Now, JavaScript pretends to have classes, but it doesn't. JavaScript classes are just syntactic sugar over constructor functions. JavaScript uses prototypical inheritance, which is different from the classical inheritance model we have in languages like Java or C Sharp. The other big problem is the module system in JavaScript. JavaScript was not initially designed for large scale applications, so it didn't have a native module system like languages like C Sharp, Java, or Python. So over time, people came up with various module systems like CommonJS, AMD, UMD, and finally the official ECMAScript modules. The problem is each of these module systems have their own syntax and conventions, and a lot of older projects still use the older systems. This means we have to translate between module systems using tools like Webpack or Babel, which adds another layer of complexity. Now, TypeScript was created to address these issues. It's a supercell of JavaScript that adds static typing and other features. It can help catch errors and make large projects more manageable. But it's a whole other language you gotta learn on top of JavaScript. Plus, there is an extra build step involved because we have to compile our TypeScript code into regular JavaScript code so browsers can understand it. That's why some folks find TypeScript adding an extra layer of complexity to their projects so they have been moving away from it. The other problem with JavaScript is its chaotic ecosystem of packages, libraries, frameworks, and even meta frameworks. Every day you see a new Medium or Twitter post about a new JavaScript tool or framework that can do something twice faster while complicating the project tenfold. Junior devs jump up and down on how amazing it is while the project gets more entangled in yet another black box JavaScript tool. The problem is by the time you learn a new framework, it's already outdated and replaced by something newer and shinier. That's why folks from other backgrounds sometimes get the impression that JavaScript devs spend more time chasing the shiny new tools than practicing core coding principles and best practices. Now, on a positive note, JavaScript runs everywhere. It's the language of web, but also runs on servers. Tons of jobs require JavaScript. So even with all the quirks, it's a language that pays the bills. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe for more videos like this.